Most of the time when we talk about a fight, we think something is coming from outside and fighting with us. Bacteria, viruses, fungi. But this is one of our own cell which has gone into a revolt mode. It has all the wisdom which we have, plus a little more. So this is a very different kind of a fight, and we have to fight it with a lot of uh, strategy. And when we just heard the number, seven lakh people die in India because of cancer, I was looking at that number in a totally different way. Supposing someone tells me that 17 flights are going to take off from Delhi every day, and each one of those 17 flights will crash, and everyone in them will die. We will suddenly start paying attention. That's exactly the number of people we are losing every year because of cancer. 17 flights, not one day, every day of 365 days. That's the reason it's very important for us to reconcile that this is a battle has to be fought at three different levels. One is a level of us talking about as a nation, as a society. Second, physicians and scientists. But it can also be fought at a level of an individual who can do certain things to really control this. And that's where I'll take that in US, Rates are very high, but majority of patients, they survive. And I don't think it's because of anything else other than attitude towards looking for it. This cancer, one day, was just about 1,000 cells. At that time, it was totally, could have been beaten up very easily by a minimal amount of uh, zapping or a surgery or a medicine. But if we allow it to become trillion cells, then it becomes a totally different kind of a fight. So we have to bring the fight early on, and only challenge is at the time when it is treatable, it doesn't produce any symptoms. So if we are waiting for symptoms to come, we are letting the enemy win. So that's my strategy towards treating the cancer, is to we have to set up our mind that don't expect symptoms. You, we have to start looking at things which could be an early sign or even before when they are not even signs. 30% of the cancer deaths in India could be prevented just by lifestyle changes. If we look at smoking, if we look at tobacco, if we look at fat, and if we look at sugar, and look at HPV and all those things, we can really stop 30% of the cancer mortality in India. We've, we've spent a lot of time initially um, by, for treating cancer by focusing on the cancer cell itself. Um, what we've come to appreciate is that cancer doesn't live in isolation, that the cells that, the normal cells that surround the cancer, in fact, determine whether or not a cancer develops. Um, and an important component of that is, is the immune system. Um, and when we realize that uh, every cancer, uh, because it depends on mutations, um, there's a host immune response against those mutations, so-called neoantigens. Um, and uh, if you actually simply take the breaks of the immune system uh, through antibodies, for example, uh, that unleashes the immune system against the cancer cells and is able to achieve very durable responses. And those have now been achieved in a whole range of cancers, including starting off with melanoma, but also lung cancer, head and neck cancer, gastric cancer, renal cancer, certain lymphomas, um, and has, has transformed the way we treat cancer, uh, simply because uh, these allow for a, a very durable response um, against, uh, against cancers without need for ongoing therapy in many cases. The second, other kind, second kind of therapy that has also become um, a sort of paradigm shifting, if you will, is the, is the capacity to inject immune cells, uh, so-called adoptive cell therapy. And the most common form of that is uh, a form where we uh, genetically modify cells, a certain kind of an immune cell called a T cell, to, uh, again, directly act against the tumor cells, a form that's called, commonly called CAR T cells. Um, and these, these therapies have already received FDA approval for treating certain kinds of leukemias and lymphomas, but are also likely to be tested in the future in solid tumors and other kinds of cancers as well. So there's a fairly, and this is just sort of the tip of the iceberg, I think there's, uh, general appreciation now that the, the most, one of the most effective ways of treating cancer is not going to be 
chemotherapy, but perhaps immune-based approaches that allow for a more durable and controlled response. Cancer, after all, is a setting where uh, uh, the, the tumor cells learn to evolve over a long period of time. So you need an equally smart system, and the immune system provides that approach, which can, can evolve over time as the cancer evolves. So uh, one of the reasons why uh, immune therapies have been so durable in the context of uh, cancer. Uh, 